tell us why you think that uh, that so so much of the concern about uh, GMOs is is misplaced. I just think it's um, simplistic biology. From studying evolution, what I knew is that genes wander all over the place. Basically, everybody's genome is a fast-moving mess, and that's the way it is. And so, getting puritanical about you know, whether a gene comes from uh, another like plant or from another organism that has something that that plant could use. Um, talking about biomimicry, all microbes swap genes all the time. There's five different ways they do it. Viruses is one, direct contact is another. And there's really no species in microbes. Uh, in fact, a 60% overlap of the same genes in different microbes is considered they're all of the same species. Well, that's about saying we're the same species as a jellyfish. So this kind of fungibility of genes has been normal for 3.8 billion years. And for science to step up and take all we've learned from breeding, now we can do it with more precision. Breeding is a kind of a genetic gambling. You just throw these things together, you usually irradiate the seeds or hit them with really hard chemicals. You get a lot more variety and then out of the rubble you pick what you think you like and hope that there's no traits in there that you don't like. With the engineering, you can pick the trait that you want, put it in the place that you want, and get what you want. So for example, um, Pamela Ronald, who's right up here at UC Davis, has uh, been a major part of developing a floodproof rice in Bangladesh. They lose about a third of their crop every year to flooding. With genetic engineering, she and her cohorts in Philippines and elsewhere have developed a rice um, that can hold its breath underwater two weeks. This was not accomplished by breeding. They tried for years to do it with breeding, couldn't do it. Now her co-author of this wonderful book, Marl's Table, is an organic farmer named Raul Adamchak. Teaches organic farming at Davis. And they are saying the combination of organic farming and genetic engineering really is the future of food. And I'm persuaded they're right. Winona Leduc, I see you nodding your head. Is that in agreement? I'm, well, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> The seed companies, um, you know, have said that the answer to world hunger is, is GE corn or GE foods. And um, I don't believe that that's the answer to world hunger. I think that uh, increasingly, I mean, that it is far more complex than that. You know, obviously you have to deal with climate change issues, but biodiversity, in fact, the UN, you know, just came out with this report that says that, you know, agroecological methods are much higher in, in rebooting food production than anything that you can do in, in these test trials. I mean, the reality is, is that hunger issues have to do with, um, have to do with militarization, have to do with uh, you know, colonization, have to do with lax, lack of access to land, have to do with the, you know, the theft of seeds, intellectual property, um, cultural property, and, and have also to do with consumption issues. I mean, the fact is, is that you know, we Americans, I, I was reading some gross statistic that we eat 815 billion calories of food you know, more than we need, which is enough to feed about 80 million people. Um, you know, it's, and, and the choices that we make in food, I mean, you, you guys, you know, this is Earth Island Institute, you know this, you don't need a lecture on this. I mean, the fact that we, you know, we raise cattle instead of, of uh, you know, being a lot lower on the food chain and the choices that we make. Um, so, you know, from my perspective, I don't think that if, you know, it's, it goes like nuclear energy and, and GE uh, foods is similar, you know, in the question. If that's the answer, what was the question? You know, if the question is who should own the world's food supply, you know, you got GE foods, there you go. That's a good way to do it. Um, you know, if, if, the, if the question is how to feed people, I think that, you know, we have to be honest that feeding people has to do with a much more complex set of issues. I think that's quite uh, commendable that this uh, rice that grew like that. Mm -hmm. You know, if I told that story to Jerry Kononui in Hawaii, you know, he'd tell me, well, we got one taro plant that grows like that too. You know, the University of Hawaii is trying to patent it, but they want to make a monocrop, and I told them it's not going to work because it'll never be resistant because they just, you know, monocrop it, which is the problem with every one of those seeds is you monocrop it, and you, you know, you should have learned from the Irish potato famine that you grow millions of acres of, you know, stuff that grows underwater, you're going to get one fungus underwater be gone. You know, probably better to have a little biodiversity, which would be the teaching that, you know, most communities would have. So, you know, um, I, you know, I don't think that GE is, uh, foods are the answer to hunger. I think that, um, you know, um, this broader set of issues needs to be addressed. And in fact, you know, 
the issues that I see in my own community are how you get people to quit shopping and then start growing. You know, um, I mean, you know, and and in California you got more of that, but I think that that is really increasingly a worldwide issue. And I think you guys should quit on the goji berries. What if you eat the last goji berry? <laughs> uh, you know, these are the kind of issues I got for California. I think you guys are high on the organic food chain. All right. You know? <laughs>